He is one of the most dynamic quarterbacks in the country. And once again, his last name is... Carr for the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs! A little more than a decade ago, it was big brother David who lit up the California sky for Fresno State. Now, little brother Derek and the Bulldogs' number one offense is one game away from a conference title. Touchdown! Touchdown! It's another Fresno State touchdown! Can anyone stop Carr? But staring them straight in the eyes is Utah State's number one defense. The Aggies are here. Nothing ever phases us! And it's picked off by the Aggies! He will score! The Aggies are primed to cage the Bulldogs, a team that's no stranger to the end zone, tallying almost 50 points per. Touchdown catch! A spectacular play for Fresno State! Does defense win championships? And it is picked off! Take that! Or is this offensive explosion too much to withstand? What a catch! It's another Fresno State touchdown! Two different strengths, one common goal to win a conference championship. In the heart of the San Joaquin Valley, on a rare, frigid night in Fresno, California, it's the inaugural Mountain West Championship game. Utah State in its first year in the conference, gunning for its sixth straight victory against a Fresno State team hungry to get back in the win column. Hi everyone, welcome to Fresno. I'm Andrew Catalan, Aaron Taylor, and Ali LaForce will join me in just a moment. Well, the bubble burst for the Bulldogs last week. Their BCS dreams went up in smoke after San Jose State torched their defense for 62 points and more than 700 yards of offense, handing Fresno State its first loss of the year, which hurts even more now after Northern Illinois lost last night in the MAC championship game. Now, earlier this week, head coach Tim DeRuiter referred to San Jose State as Austin Powers. He said, quote, they stole our mojo. As I bring in my partner, former Notre Dame All-American Aaron Taylor. Aaron, after a crushing loss, how did the Bulldogs get their mojo back? Come on, man. You remember <laughs> at the end of the movie, Felicity Shagwell told him, hey, your mojo's still inside of you. And I agree with her because I don't think you can lose your mojo, but you can give it away. And that's what Fresno State did last week to San Jose State. But to their credit, the senior leadership are resigned to not let that one loss equal two. They will not let that loss define their season. And I was impressed with what I saw from them and their coaches. I think they're ready to play and they said they had a great week of practice now for the longest time this season it looked like Boise State and Fresno State were on a collision course to meet in the Mountain West Championship game but two weeks ago the Broncos lost in overtime to San Diego State and that opened the door for the Aggies to clinch the Mountain Division meanwhile the West Division has been all Fresno State they did have a wild overtime victory over San Diego State in early November and that helped send the Bulldogs on their way to the division crown and here come the Aggies. Led by first year head coach Matt Wells. They ended the season on a five game win streak. And their defense is the heart and soul of this football team. Number one in the Mountain West, allowing only 321 yards per game. Over this five game win streak, they've surrendered just 10 points per game. And guess what? It's a true freshman steering the ship at quarterback. Darrell Garrettson is 5-0 as the starter. This team has done a tremendous job of rallying around the 19-year-old after star quarterback Chucky Keaton went down with a season-ending injury. Yeah, when Keaton went down, everybody thought all was lost on the offensive side of the ball. But to Garrettson's credit, the young man has simply done a fantastic job of protecting the football, not making mistakes. And when he has, he has been unflappable. And it's a big reason why he's managed this offense better than people gave him credit for. And his defense has done a tremendous job. Their linebackers have been so impressive throughout the year. Man, these guys have combined for over 400 tackles these last two years, and they need to be imperative tonight against both the run and the pass. They run to the football, they tackle well. They are a treat to watch on that side of the ball. Home fans getting ready to rock. Here comes Fresno State. The captains decided to wear black on black uniforms for the championship game. A 10 and one record looking to win an outright conference title for the first time since 1991. And the Bulldogs have lit up the scoreboard all year long. Fourth in the country, averaging 47 points per game. And their 581 yards is second only to Baylor. 
Every game this year, they've scored at least 35 points. And the director of this offense has a familiar last name, Derek Carr, the younger brother of former number one overall pick, David Carr, is putting up video game numbers for the Bulldogs. Man, has he ever, Andrew. You want to talk about a guy that deserves to get a free trip to New York, it's him. Smart, competitive, physically gifted pocket passer that's got some sneaky mobility, three-year starter, and although he's still in college, he approaches a game like a pro, and that should serve him well, not only tonight, but into the future on the next level. Leads the country in several passing categories, including 45 touchdown passes. The third member of our broadcast team tonight is Allie LaForce, and she's with the second-year head coach of the Bulldogs, Tim DeRuiter. Coach, last week was tough. You suffer your first and only loss of the season. How has the team responded this week? Uh, they responded great. We've got tremendous leadership. Had a great week of practice. Number one goal is win the Mountain West Conference. We had an opportunity to do it right here at home. That's what motivates our guys. Speaking of number one, you have the number one offense in the conference. You're going up against Utah State and the number one defense in the conference. How do you prepare differently going up against the best defense in the conference? We, we don't prepare differently. We, we have a formula we, we all believe in, we trust in. Our guys just have to execute. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank you very guys. much. Allie, thank you. What an atmosphere in Fresno tonight. The conference title is on the line. Will it be the league's number one offense, or does the top-ranked defense prevail? Late night football in California. It's the inaugural Mountain West Championship game. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Sonic. New York Life Insurance Company. Grudge Match. And by Bud Light. They've been tailgating for hours in Fresno, almost set to go kick off at the inaugural Mountain West Championship game. Let's go down to the field. Allie LaForce is with Utah State head coach Matt Wells. Coach, your stout defense is holding teams to just under 17 points per game. You're playing Fresno State, who's averaging close to 50. How do you stop this Fresno State offense? Well, I don't know if you stop it, but we're going to have to try to control it and slow it down. You know, it's good on good. Mountain West best defense against the Mountain West probably best offense. You're starting a freshman quarterback who has gone 5 0 and been outstanding, but this is a championship like environment. What have you seen from him this week that makes you so confident that he'll play just fine tonight? Well, he's pretty efficient. He's got a lot of moxie. He's a coach's son, so I expect nothing but good things out of him. Coach, good luck. Thanks. Okay, thank you. All right, Allie, thank you. Utah State won the coin toss, and they deferred. They're going to give Fresno State the ball to start the game. 41 degrees right now. It's going to drop, though. And the all-time record low for this date is 25 in Fresno. We'll keep an eye on that. Damari Scott, averaging 19 yards a return, is back deep for the Bulldogs. And we are underway at Bulldog Stadium. Scott from the four. And he's brought down at the 25-yard line. That'll bring the Fresno State offense out onto the field, led by their General Derek Carr, the senior, has thrown 45 touchdown passes and just five interceptions on the season. Now, there's been a pattern for the Bulldogs throughout the course of the year. They like, when they're at home on their first play, to use a gadget play, use a trick play, try to get the fans going. We'll see if they do it here. Five wide receivers for Carr to start. Shotgun, and he is sacked. No trick play that time. Brought down by B.J. Larson. Three and a half sacks now on the season for Mr. Larson. A four-yard loss. Well, Andrew, when we take a look at the lineups for Fresno State, Devontae Adams, over 1,400 yards and 22 touchdowns, lead the FBS. With the injuries they have with the wide receivers, he's got to play well tonight. Isaiah Burst has some room down the near side, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Let's take a look at that number one defense. Yeah, these guys run to the football well, but keep your eye tonight on Nevin Lawson, the cornerback. He's one of the better cornerbacks in the Mountain West Conference. Earlier in the year, he played pretty well against Marquise Lee. Let's see how well he plays tonight against one of the nation's other finer wide receivers, because he's going to be locked up one-on-one -on -one with our boy Adams. 
And we have our first flag of the night. Tonight's official is Reggie Smith. Aaron, Fresno State had allowed only eight sacks all year. Give up one on the first play. There is no foul on the play for a false start. We were resetting the play clock following the loss of a player helmet offensively. It's first down. Yeah, it's imperative tonight, Andrew, that Utah State create pressure and challenge these wide receivers at the line of scrimmage. It's the recipe that San Diego State used, and they did the best job all season long of stopping this offense. Utah State off to a good start early on this drive. Carr lost one for Adams, makes the catch, and then lost the football. Penalty flag down, ball still loose, scooped up by Maurice Alexander. Right now, the ruling on the field is a fumble in Utah State football. We have to wait and see what the penalty is. A 28-yard catch by Adams, and then he coughed it up. Nevin Lawson was on the coverage for Utah State. These DBs for Utah State are so aggressive. Talking to this coaching staff, they don't mind the aggressiveness of them, them on the outside edge because of the physicality of things. There is no foul on the play. The ruling on the field is a catch and subsequent fumble recovered by the defense. The field judge reached for his bean bag, inadvertently threw the flag, first down. Aggies football after Alexander scooped it up. Here's another look. We talked about them needing to challenge. Great release that time by Adams. Nevin Lawson, to his credit, fighting for that football. We talked about the physical nature of this Utah State Aggie defense. And right <laughs> at the first series of this game, Andrew, they're trying to set the tone. That's important to give this team the some confidence. On the field of a catch and fumble is under further review. They will take another look at this one up in the replay booth, but it appears to be a good call. There's the catch. Lawson forces the fumble, and Alexander picks it up. Utah State leads the Mountain West in turnover margin. If this play stands, they'll be plus nine on the season. Yeah, what they're going to look at is to see if Devontae Adams fully had control of this football. Right there, it doesn't. It's moving around a little bit. It seems like they both have their hands on it right there, but the ball is moving throughout the play. Nevin Lawson gets his hands in there and jars it free, but the officials in the booth are trying to make the determination, did Adams have full control throughout this catch before Lawson pulled it out? After further review, the ruling on the field of a catch and fumble has been confirmed. First and 10, Utah State. So the sophomore Adams loses the football having an incredible season 22 touchdowns leads the country but bulldog stadium has gone quiet as utah state forces the early turnover now their offense takes out on the field it seemed like that ball was moving a little bit andrew i don't know they made that decision pretty quickly that could prove to be a very big decision in this ball game Here's the true freshman, Darryl Garrettson, throwing deep on first down to Natson. Makes the catch and tackled at the 42-yard line into Fresno State territory. A 38-yard hookup. This is exactly what Utah State needs to be able to do is to take shots downfield and get big plays. This isn't necessarily a typically prototypical explosive offense. So for them to take some vertical shots, that will open up the running lanes, which is what they like to do. Travis Reynolds is not playing tonight. He is Utah State's top receiver. Injured his knee two weeks ago and is not able to go as they go to Joey DiMartino on first down. So you're going to see a lot of Bruce Natson in this game, both as a wide receiver and as a Wildcat quarterback that they like to use Natson out of. Well, here's the true freshman, Darrell Garrison, just 19 years old, out of Chandler, Arizona, went to Chandler High School. He was supposed to redshirt this season. But after Chucky Keaton went down in early October, the coaches pulled the red shirt, and Garrison's been 5-0 as the starter. DiMartino is tripped up. Oh, 
Adro Ederine making the tackles. We look at the Aggies on offense. Yeah, offensive center Tyler Larson's first team all conference the last two years in the WAC, and he and his line mates are going to have to be key against a front that's pretty active trying to blitz the passer. And make no mistake about it, is a true freshman quarterback of Daryl Garrettson. They're going to try and get him off as a spot and affect him throwing the football. Third and six, Utah State first in the conference, hit 47% on third downs. Garrettson scrambles across the 40, and he's brought down short of the first down by Kyrie Wilson. Great protection that time by that Utah State Aggie offensive line. We talked about that. Garrettson had plenty of time to throw. He's staring his receiver down. He comes off when his first read's not there and just uses his legs to be able to try and make a play. But you got to give credit to Kyrie Wilson, the second leading tackler on this team. He hawked him down. But here Utah State being aggressive, going for it on fourth down. I like it. Fourth down and three, 43% on the season on fourth downs. Garrettson under center. Van Leeuwen, the motion man. Garrettson rolls right, throws, and it is in. No, it's caught, but short of the first down. Pass is complete, but Charles Washington was right there to make the play for the Bulldogs on defense. And Tim DeRuiter and Nick Toth fired up. What a start to this one, a turnover, and then Fresno State holds on defense. Van Leeuwen made the grab, but Charles Washington Playing quarterback for the first time this season makes the tackle with 11.43 to go. For all of your college football scores and news, download the CBS Sports app. Text SCORE to 42777 or go to cbssports.com slash mobile. Message and data rates may apply. Fresno State offense back out on the field after Devontae Adams coughed it up on their first drive. 11.43 to go, opening quarter. Inaugural Mountain West Championship game. They toss it on the swing to Adams, and he gets nine on the play. So Devontae Adams trying to get his hands back on the football, get him some confidence as the Bulldogs have it second down and one. Jake Dowdy made the stop. This is Josh Kazada, and he falls forward for a Fresno State first down. Do have to point out that Josh Harper, the second re leading receiver on this Fresno State team, is not playing tonight. He hurt his groin last week on a touchdown catch against San Jose State. So they are down one of their top targets in this loaded offense. Kazada again close to midfield and push back. Stopping the run is going to be imperative tonight for Utah State. They're going to have to try and tip the hand of this offense for the Bulldogs. But what I just saw at the top of the screen, Andrew, on that last play, some miscommunication on the bubble screen. I would expect Fresno State's coaches saw that, and they'll try and hit him with a bubble here at some point on this drive. Carr has time, looking deep, and the pass is caught by the tight end, Marcel Jensen. Senior out of Fairfield, California, with an 18-yard gain. Not bad by the former offensive lineman, then a defensive lineman, then an offensive lineman, then finally a tight end just running a perfect corner route, and Derek Carr's ball hit the money. Bulldogs like to go fast, 85 plays per game. That's third in the country. Carr gets them to the line quickly on first and ten. Looking right again, and it's caught by Aaron Peck. Just his fourth catch of the season, and he's a guy that's going to see a lot more playing time tonight with the absence of Josh Harper. You notice after Fresno State giving up that sack on the first play of the game, they're going more to their quick game, and that's one of Derek Carr's strengths is getting rid of the football quickly. Looking deep for Adams. Good coverage downfield by Lawson. You're going to see Lawson number one on Adams as much as possible tonight. If you're Utah State, that's their game plan. No question. We talked about that physicality, and Nevin Lawson uses great body position. Here he is 
great body position, just running with him stride and stride. When he sees him turn and look for the ball, Nevin Lawson turns and look for the ball. And you see that? Yeah, baby, exit out. You ain't getting none on this, Devontae Adams. And first incompletion of the night for Derek Carr. That brings up third down and one. to the tight end Jensen and incomplete and now what does Tim DeRuiter do on fourth and one what scouts look is whether or not quarterbacks can temper the throw that ball had some mustard on it Marcel Jensen has to be able to bring that one in but oftentimes Derek Carr will throw those balls pretty hard and a little bit behind the receivers but here on fourth and one Watch old number four's legs. They're fifth in the country on fourth downs, averaging 74%. They go for it here. Kazada following his blockers left side. First down for Fresno State. He needed one, he got four. Seems like Utah State is a lot more worried about stopping the pass that they're letting the Bulldogs have some success running the football whether it's on the perimeter in between the tackles they have to get some success on first down to get them behind the chains. Kazada cuts it back inside across the 15 and down to the 12 yard line Josh Kazada the transfer from BYU picks up seven on that play he was actually recruited by offensive coordinator Dave Schramm when Schramm was at Utah. Ended up going to BYU. Let's take a look at the Verizon red zone. Fresno State has scored a touchdown on 75% of its red zone possessions. That's eighth in the country. So Derek Carr direct in traffic, alerting his receivers to potential coverage. Carr, corner of the end zone, and it is incomplete. Was trying to hook up with Isaiah Burst. Yeah, there was a little miscommunication on that between them and the location of the football. Where the quarterback's trying to throw the football is in a one yard square in the back of the end zone, and it was just a little bit further than the outstretched hands of Isaiah Burst could bring in. Third down and three for the Bulldogs. Early on, Carr has had plenty of time to throw, Aaron. Yeah, after that first sack, I think that they need to dial up some blitzes. That's where they've had some success. Here comes some pressure, and Carr just gets rid of it. Paul Pucala was one of the Aggies There's leading no the charge. And this is just basically a three-step drop, although it is from the shotgun. Where he's trying to get rid of that ball. The offensive line cut, but because of good coverage, Derek Carr had to hold that football and had to get rid of it. Credit the blitz and Utah State's defensive line getting after him to force this field goal on fourth down. Fackrell and Zach Vigil also applying pressure as Colin McGuire comes out for a 30-yard attempt. He's 10 for 15 on the season. He's missed two of his last three, but McGuire, the true freshman, knocks this one through. It's the inaugural Mountain West Championship with 8.36 to go. Fresno State draws first blood. Who will take home the title? Utah State and Fresno State battling for the crown in Cali. Adam Zucker with this update from New York, the Big Ten Championship. The Buckeyes have come all the way back from down 17-0. Braxton Miller capping their first possession of the second half with a touchdown. He has over 100 yards at 17-all. Andrew and Aaron, Auburn fans, not as giddy as they were an hour ago. And school record 24-game win streak. It's unbelievable, Andrew. Ohio State early on in that ball game, really, really lagging and struggling to be able to get something going offensively. But as we heard Adam say, they started figuring out. I think it's going to be interesting because we saw in the MAC championship last night that defense did win championships. I think the Big Ten championship is going to have that element in this game that we have here tonight. Number one defense versus number one offense. And so far, so good for the Aggies. But they have to be able to get something going off on the offensive side of the ball on this series. McGuire will kick it away. Glover right and Jeremy Morris back deep. This is usually where Travis Reynolds will be, but he's not playing tonight as we told you earlier. It'll be Glover right from the 10. And Glover right still pushing his legs forward, finally brought down at 
the 28 yard line. Well, Aaron, you and I were here in Logan, Utah in early October. Sold out crowd at Romney Stadium against BYU and Chucky Keaton, their star quarterback, tore his ACL and his MCL. He had 18 touchdowns and two interceptions on the season, third all time at Utah State in total offense. And let's be honest, neither one of us thought that Utah State would be in this game after Chucky Keaton went down. What a job they have done under first-year head coach Matt Wells. Garrison throws on first down, and a great catch there by Brandon Swindle. Garrison 5-0 as the starter, and just a true freshman. He's done a phenomenal job ever since field, Chucky Keaton went down. The receiver juggled the ball inbounds and caught it out of bounds, incomplete. And they've overturned that call of a catch by Swindle. And it's pretty cold here tonight, Andrew, and that oftentimes can affect receivers catching the football. Their hands aren't as soft and supple as they usually are. And very early in this ball game, on both sides of the ball, we've seen receivers having trouble bringing in those tough catches. Good call there. 8.23 to go, first quarter. Second down and 10 for the Aggies. 8-4 and four record, 7-1 and one in the Mountain West. Garrison in trouble. Garrison goes down. Deron Smith, the last one to get him. This is a defense that was very passive last week against San Jose State. And talking to defensive coordinator Nick Toth, he said, hey, I wasn't as aggressive as I needed to be. We're not going to make that same mistake tonight. Number 13 right there, Deron Smith, took very personal that loss and didn't feel like he played well. That's going to give this unit the confidence they need, bringing up here on a big third down. His fourth sack of the season, third and 16. Garrison bobbles the snap and does the smart thing, just falls on it. What a brutal series for the Aggies. They go three and out after a 10-yard loss. Well, this is the last thing that they needed to do. This is just miscues. Daryl Garrison with his eyes downfield takes his eyes off the football. And just simple center quarterback exchange forces a punt. What this is going to do, Andrew, is likely give Fresno State tremendous field position after this punt. Jaron Bentrude from his own end zone. Isaiah Burse is back deep for the Bulldogs. And Burse fields it at the 40. Running left, gets away from one. Gets away from a couple, and Burks finally goes down at the 43-yard line after a 48-yard punt. Yeah, shot you want to corral. The tackle. You want to corral Isaiah Burks, buddy. I mean, he's somebody that can take it to the house. Had two punt returns for a touchdown against Cal Poly. Tough series for the Aggies. Garrison couldn't handle the shotgun snap. A 10-yard loss. Fresno State ball when we come back to Bulldog Stadium. How long did it take that guy to get ready for tonight's game? Festive atmosphere in Fresno. The Bulldogs have a 3-0 lead with 6.55 to go in the opening quarter. The offense getting set to come back out onto the field without, as we told you earlier, Josh Harper. He's out for the Bulldogs. Travis Reynolds out for the Aggies. So two of the top receivers in this game are not playing. And for more on that, let's go down to the field, check in with Ali LaForce. Guys, coach told us yesterday that Harper would be a game time decision, but he didn't even dress for pregame warmups. And I talked to Fresno State's head athletic trainer, and he said he practiced all week and got better each day, but he still only got up to about 80%. And with a groin injury, it's one of those injuries that you just can't rush, especially in cold weather, where you can really suffer a more dangerous injury. They decided that they weren't going to have him go today, but he really wanted to be out there, but only got up to about 80%. Burse catches the swing pass from Carr and gets close to first down yardage. It's one of the things that Fresno State will like to do is attack the perimeter, bringing wide receivers into the backfield and showing a 20 personnel look and then try and get you out on the edge. Burse got nine on that one, so it's second down and one. Carr steps up and he's brought down. Kyler Fackrell on the sack. Second sack of the night for the Aggies. 
so impressed with Kyler Fackrell and his ability to be able to rush the passer. Just a tremendous player. They also bring Maurice Alexander from that free safety spot. Even with that big old cast on his hands, it forced Derek Carr to get off his spot. Utah State has to continue to be able to do this because when Derek Carr is uncomfortable, he's not nearly as effective. Third down and seven. Incomplete. Was trying to connect with Aaron Peck. And for Carr, that's his fifth straight incompletion. You see what the pressure can do. It rattles any quarterback. This is not just Derek Carr. Utah State has to be able to do it. But his first read, he wanted to get to Devontae Adams at the right of your screen. Look at Nevin Lawson. Dean these guys up one on one in man coverage. Something that San Jose State wasn't able to do last week, but they're sending the message. You come across my field, you go get punched in the mouth. Garrett Swanson, the walk on for Fresno State with a high spiraling punt. And Natson calls for a fair catch at the 13 yard line. That's where the Aggies will take over. 5.48 to go, first quarter. Fresno State had only allowed eight sacks the entire season. They've given up two tonight against the Aggies. Adam Zucker with his Heisman watch presented by Nissan. We go to the ACC championship game. Jameis Winston, he's your front runner, finding his best receiver, Kelvin Benjamin, who makes the most of it for 54 yards. They're up 31 nothing right now on Duke. 38 passing touchdowns, an FBS freshman record for famous Jameis. Andrew and Aaron, Heisman votes are due Monday. And who do you got, Mr. Aaron Taylor? Well, I think without question, it's Jameis Winston's to lose. A lot's going to depend upon, obviously, and how he finishes that game. The outcome may be under control, but, man, looks like Florida State's going to be in the Rose Bowl playing for the national championship as we see Terrell Garrettson miss a wide open tight end, Keegan Anderson, and he has to be able to hit those plays. He seems a little bit early. There was pressure in his face, but Keegan Anderson running wide open in the seam. This offense will come back to that. But this young man needs to settle down and manage this offense. But for him to do that, Andrew, Utah State has to run the football. On second down, they do run the football to Joey DiMartino and find some room. And DiMartino wrestled down by Charles Washington. 13 yards for DiMartino. DiMartino's one of those backs that's gotten better and better throughout the year. And when Hill went down earlier in the year, they didn't know if he was going to be the type of player that could carry the load. But all he's done is rush for over 1,000 yards and be a consistent playmaker for this offense. Penalty comes in, false start. Full start. Offense number 22, five yard penalty. It's first down. Penalties on Keegan Anderson. Joe Hill was the feature back for the Aggies to start the year, but he went down and they turned to DiMartino. As Aaron said, not sure if he could handle the load. Well, all he's done is go for over 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns. Yeah, and he gets 5.7 yards every time he touches it. And that's a big reason why they're so good on third down because they're always in front of the chains. So following the penalty, first and 15, another penalty flag. Somebody needs to tell Utah State that they're at home. Prior to the snap, both start. Offense number 77, five yard penalty. It's first down. That penalty on Sini Tauvea. And now Matt Wells and his offense backed up first and 20. Bulldog Stadium's come to life. DiMartino not going anywhere. Todd Hunt leading the charge for the Fresno State defense. And that's what Fresno State needs to do is fly around to the football and tackle well. Keep the football inside and in front again. Utah State's been so successful this year. and Garrettson's been 5-0 and as a starter because this offense has been balanced, which means the running game's going. But when you get yourself behind the chains by getting penalties on first down, it makes it really hard to convert. On second. 
second down, Garrison pump fake, looking deep for Van Leeuwen, and it's incomplete. But there's a penalty flag down at the line of scrimmage on the far side of the field. I wonder if this is going to be offsides, Andrew. A lot of times in big games like this, there's a lot of emotion, and everybody wants to make a play, but you got to hold your water. Offside, defense, number 27, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. So the Aggies catch a break. Donovan Lewis, the guilty party. See him up there at the top of your screen trying to get a quick get off on the ball to be able to create some pressure. And you see Fresno State showing pressure. And that's what they're going to try and do is confuse Garrettson, show pressure and not bring it, show it off the edges, but bring it up the middle and try and confuse him so that he's not comfortable in what the defense is. Garrettson held on for two. Todd Hunt, his second sack of the season. A lot of movement pre-snap, Andrew. A lot of movement pre-snap. People moving around before the snap. Garrettson does not know what the defense is. Good protection, but nowhere to go. And there's some late seepage. That's very hard for an offensive lineman to hold his block that long. They're just trying to get some yards here. This is going to be a tough conversion. Garrison can ill afford to make a mistake and force a throw here. Utah State 0 for 2 on third downs in this quarter. Third and a mile. Garrison sacked again. Donovan Lewis with the sack this time for the Bulldogs defense. Their third of the night. Well, we talked at the top of the show, Andrew, how important it was going to be for this offensive line led by Tyler Larson, their center, to give this young quarterback some time. And Fresno State, to their credit, is pinning their ears back and getting after the quarterback, something they didn't do last week, which is why they lost that full game or that football game to San Jose State. Ben Trude misses this one off the side of his foot. Bounces at the 38. Close runs in and picks it up. And Fresno State with golden field position after Bentrude came up short on that one. Monday on CBS, Melissa McCarthy and Billy Gardell star in a new episode of the hit comedy Mike and Molly. Monday at 9, 8 central, only CBS. The Bulldogs will start at the 31-yard line of Utah State with 2.30 to go in the opening quarter. Once again, Fresno State starting off with excellent field position as a result of their defense. Carr throws that one away. Andrew, we talk about field position and those hidden yards. This was a... Shank, he felt like there was pressure that Ben Trude was feeling. And once again, Fresno State, this is too explosive of an offense to allow to play on half of a football field. Just a 30 yard punt for Ben Trude. Second down and 10. Carr fires this one to flip it. Caught along the near sideline by Devontae Adams. <laughs> That ball was in the air for a little bit. You saw Utah State licking their chops, aggressively attacking the football is what you want to do, but sometimes to win championships, you got to be good and lucky. And that time on that play, Devontae Adams was both. Short of a first down, though, third down and three. Utah State has to bring pressure. They cannot give Derek Carr time to throw this football. Carr feels the pressure, gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. Pressure was coming from Pattaya Lee. Fresno State better get used to that all night long. It's pretty clear early on in this ball game that both defenses are trying to get after the quarterback and get them off their spot. Looked like Carr was trying to convince DeRuiter to go for it on fourth and three. And there's a penalty flag down in the field at the 33-yard line. The quarterback, while in the pocket and under duress, threw the pass in an area where there was no receiver. Intentional grounding. Offense number four. Loss of down. A spot of the foul. It's fourth down. That'll push back the Bulldogs. And here's another look at the hit. 
They did bring pressure and did affect him. He was throwing the football. It certainly was high. But again, both these teams, a lot of yellow flags on the field early on in this ball game. Big reason why is because of how aggressive each of these teams is trying to be early on. So it's fourth down and 12. The ball is at the 33-yard line, so it would be a 50-yard field goal. Colin McGuire's career long is 47. Right now, Tim DeLuter doesn't have anybody out on the field. Delivery, offense, five-yard penalty. It's fourth down. So now they'll back it up another five yards, make it fourth and 17. And he's going to send the punter Swanson out there. Took the extra five yards. Take the extra five yards to give yourself a little bit more room to try and continue to win this field position battle that Fresno State is dominating early in this first quarter. Natson races back there for Utah State. Second punt for Swanson. Natson lets this one bounce. Hits at the five and down. Great coverage on the play by Fresno State. Miles uh, Deron Smith. This is just a beautiful punt. You want to be able to hit it high to be able to give your cover team time to be able to get down there. And once the ball you know is going to bounce in front of you, turn your back to the goal line and do exactly what Smith did, putting his defense in a beautiful position. And Utah State needs to be careful here because with the pressure that Fresno State's bringing, they don't want to give up a safety here. And looking at Derek Carr, who on that last hit went down hard on his left arm. We'll keep an eye on that. The Aggies from the two. DiMartino. It's just across the five-yard line. Gives Garrettson some breathing room. Another look at that hit by Carr. Keep an eye on the left arm. Bata Ali, you see him there immediately go down and grab that left forearm or wrist area. Those injuries tend to mount up, particularly when it's cold. They sting a little bit more, but Derek Carr is a tough sucker. DiMartino again gets across the 10-yard line. And he's going to be marked just short of a first down. And I like that. In this situation, slow things down, try and get yourself into a rhythm. Running the football is about rhythm. They like to run a lot of powers, a lot of counters. They will attack the perimeter with some stretch zone plays. Play action on third and one. Garrison incomplete. Trying to find Keegan Anderson, Donovan Lewis applied the pressure. Third and one, you like the pass call there, Aaron. Well, it's play action, and this is something that they like to do. They run a lot of boots, they run a lot of sprints, but I think Fresno State was just ready for it. When I was charting these guys on third down, overwhelmingly, they threw the football in third and medium and to third and short, and I think Fresno State had just done their film study and was all over it because Lewis wasn't having any of that. So they're now 0 for 4 on third downs in this first quarter. Ben True given another chance. Low kick. Bounces at the 40. First scoops it up at the 48. Hit hard and brought down at the 45-yard line. Frankie Sutera making the special teams tackle for the Aggies. Next Saturday, freshman sensation Aaron Gordon in the Arizona Wildcats undefeated and poised to become the nation's top-ranked team for the first time in 10 years. But Mitch McGarry and the national championship runner-up Michigan Wolverines are hoping their big game experience is the deciding factor next Saturday at noon Eastern on CBS. Carr is back in there. First down and 10. This is Martez Waller to the 45-yard line. Saw Missouri and UCLA kicking off our college hoop season. Earlier today, what a day on CBS. You had the hoops game to start in the SEC championship game and now late night Mountain West football. Final 15 seconds of the quarter. This time last week, Fresno State was down 50 to 49. Not exactly, but close after that shootout against San Jose State is Cazada with a powerful first down run. And that will likely be the final play of the first quarter.
This is the end Fresno of the Fresno State quarter. averaging 47 points per game. Held to a field goal in the opening quarter. That's the end of one with the score. Fresno State 3, Utah State nothing. We'll return to the Mountain West Championship game in Fresno after this message and a word from your local station.